So guys, how are you? Very well. Very good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so before we get into like the music stuff, I was really wondering what was you guys first musical memory? Um that's a good question. I guess my one of my first musical memories is is riding in the back of my mum's car and she used to play like awesome tapes and like you know, I used to get like uh like rock I guess like mixes or whatever, like rock albums with like Road trip stuff. Oh like yeah, like now you know, I selected like thirty rock songs that were all different bands and stuff. Do you have like a an artist or like a song in mind? Oh yeah, she used to play like ABBA or or like Kiss or the Beatles or the Beach Boys, like loads of different like rock and pop stuff. Mine's so similar. Is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I suppose when you're when you're a kid, you just listen to what your parents listen to. Yeah. Like, in my, it's yeah the same kind of thing. It's like family holidays, road trips. My mum and my dad listen to things like uh, Eurythmics, things like that. Beatles, no way. Stones. Yeah. Um, Fine Young Cannibals. Really? Them? No, never heard I of them really before. I don't either. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, Mum's collection of music was actually like, like weirdly influential. Like, I mean, I love ABBA, but you know, from a songwriting perspective, like the Beatles and the Beach Boys, and then all that hard rock stuff, is like, like basically what I don't know we we do in like the songs I write. Like that's basically those two vibes of the you know. Did you always weird. wanted to become a musician? Uh, I don't know, like, I mean, well, as a young kid, like, until I was like nine, I got my first guitar when I was nine, so obviously pre nine years old, I was just a kid, <clears throat> so I didn't know, but like, yeah, just like, kicking ass being a kid, but, <laughs> but as soon as I got that guitar, I was just like, I was like, obsessed, so, yeah, from nine years old, I guess I did, I did want to be a musician. And for you, Jim? Yeah. Pretty much. After all the kid general stuff, astronaut, all that train driver is not exciting at all. But you really wanted to be. I really wanted to be a train driver. That's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah. That's awesome. So I was like, yeah, an early teen, started <laughs> playing guitar, started getting into like music TV and like looking up to all those kind of people. So yeah. Yeah. pretty much, it was always like I never really thought it would happen. I never thought I'd end up playing music, but I always wanted to. Yeah, like I can remember like just like playing guitar, like learning guitar in my. And my mum lived out in the middle of nowhere and um, I can remember just like there was nothing to do and I was bored out of my mind so I'd just play guitar for like six hours a day like maybe more just like do nothing apart from play guitar and I can remember like my brother coming into my room and stuff and just being like what is like what is wrong with you like he just thought I was super weird and I'd be like look I can play by my head and <laughs> that's weird stuff but I don't know I was just obsessed with it. Were you already writing songs by that age? Yeah, I started writing songs immediately and I, I briefly like got a, um, a guitar teacher to teach me stuff but as soon as, in, as, it, as I was like in lessons with him I was just like no, no I just want to learn I don't want to learn other people's songs I just want to learn how to write songs and he didn't obviously he wasn't a songwriter but he taught me like basically he taught me power chords and then I was like right I'm like done with lessons or whatever. So then I just kind of taught myself from that point. And just like, when I was like, I don't know, like from the age of like 13 to all through school, like to 18 or whatever, I carried around little notebooks and like would write like lyrics all the time. And yeah, I wrote songs like all the time, like pages and pages of really, really bad songs. Do you uh, still have notebooks now? Yeah, yeah. but. I, I, I do have notebooks, they're a lot bigger, but now I just kind of, I write so much that I just have paper, like sheets of paper, and like I clip them all together. Like, my, where I live, my, my little apartment is just filled with boxes of paper. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to fast forward a little bit because the band was formed in 2007, but yep. I read somewhere that you were already writing songs when you were still in your previous band, Mother Fulpine? Yep. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Yep. Yeah. So, um, did you already know you wanted to like get out of that band and start your own? Yeah, like that band was, was awesome and we did <clears throat> really well in a really brief period. Like we were, we were hardly even a band for very long. Um, 
but I just kind of wanted to, I guess, move away from that, and it, and it was a, a bit of a weird vibe. So I just started to write these completely different songs, and then and then that was the beginning of Dinosaur. But even even Dinosaur really is, has gone through loads of forms, and and you know I guess we've like I guess because it started with me on my own in the beginning, and obviously now it's a band with Mike and Jim. It's kind of like gone through all the progression of what a band would maybe do before anyone knows about the band, but we've done all of that progression like in the public eye, you know, like, cause it started out as such a different thing and now we're like, we've kind of found what we are and what we want to do and we're like a full on sort of touring rock band. Like we've done all that progression and change like in front of people, yeah. which is kind of weird, but that's just the way it is, you know. Yeah. Because speaking of that progression, I read also that the first two um, albums you um, wrote them and published them by yourself. Yeah. Which now you're in a band. Is that like an adjustment to first doing it all by yourself and now have like two? Yeah, I mean it's a better like that's how the kind of the band has kind of grown. So I recorded those two, uh, the first album, the second album on my own, just because that's I was kind of in that place and I knew what to do and you know. I just kind of wanted to make the records um, and then like after like from that second record Nature Nurture um, <coughs> me, Mikey and Jim were playing and I guess you're like we just toured we toured Nature Nurture for like a year and a half or something insane like that yeah. and we just went everywhere and like we toured in, in America a lot and went to Japan and India and Europe and UK it was like crazy and that was kind of the period of touring that sort of solidified us as a group and during that time like I wrote 1111 and at the end of that period of time we went and recorded 1111 so yeah it's it's not a from how it's progressed from just me on my own to being what what it is now isn't like weird it was just very natural and it's kind of like a positive progression because how did Jim join the band well I mean weirdly we, we me and Jim knew each other for ages when Jim was touring in oh shit we met like okay really Your first tour are uh, probably after Volpine. Yeah, one That's of Dinosaur, yeah. one of the first tours of Dinosaur. We were both my old old band and Dinosaur were the two supports. So we met on that in yeah. two thousand and I don't know, when was that? Was years ago. Like eight or something. Yeah. Like so it was really early on touring for Dinosaur as Jim said. Jim was in his previous previous band. And we met on that tour and just kind of stayed friends like and and really close those two bands and then Jim's next band we were really close with them yeah. so I've known Jim for ages and, and we're all kind of a, a gang or whatever and then when Jim was out of that last band and we were looking for a new bassist it was kind of a no-brainer that we yeah. that we would ask J Jim I guess yeah. even though we hadn't been playing together you know as a band we'd known each other in a touring scene for like ever yeah. so yeah, that's how you joined. Yeah. Because when you listen to the previous two albums and this one, the sound is like totally different. Yeah. Is that something that came along with like the lineup progression? I think so, and, and I, I think it's like how we were touring as a three for that period of time, like I said, it was such an intense sort of um, like year and a half of touring, it was awesome, like not, not intense bad, like intense good. but. I think we just kind of really developed what we wanted to be as a band and how we would play and what we would sound like and like all the sets we were playing in India and like when we were on tour I remember us talking about how all our set lists were just we were just kind of just playing all the heavy songs mm, we and making the songs that weren't as heavy making them as heavy as we could yeah just kind of changing more, stuff yeah, we so before the album that more. yeah, yeah. Sorry, so before the album you already knew the sound you actually wanted to go for? Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we knew it. we wanted it to be a lot heavier and a lot more sort of driving. And obviously because also it was the first time we'd recorded as a band, it was the first time therefore that we could kind of capture that energy that we have live on record, which when I was making the records on my own, you couldn't really do. like. You know, there was definitely energy on those records for sure, but it was difficult to capture a live, a live band because it was me playing all the parts and like pretending to be a band or whatever. So, um, yeah, it was kind of, 
we, we, we knew where we wanted to go with the record, but we didn't know exactly how it would turn out. And obviously with Tom Delgetti producing it, like with him kind of, he knows us really well and knows the band and worked with me on the second record and he kind of knows the band really well. So as a four, we were kind of all thinking about like where it was going to go. So.